In this video, you're going to learn how to find the domain of a function when you're given the equation. We're going to go through six examples together. See if you can pause the video on some of these and try them on your own. We'll talk about how to write the answer in that inequality notation as well as interval notation. So let's dive in. The first example, f of x equals 2x minus 5. What's the domain? Now, you might be saying, you know, Mario, I already know what that graph looks like. Like if I was to graph this, I know it has a y-intercept of negative 5 somewhere down here. It has a slope of 2, so it's like rise 2, run 1. And I can see that when I'm talking about the domain, the domain is like what can the x values be, right? So really this graph goes to the left and to the right forever and ever. So we would say, oh, the domain is all real numbers. So you can use the, this special letter here for the all real numbers, or you could write it out, all real numbers, or if you're using the interval notation, you could say from negative infinity to positive infinity. Now, the main thing that we're looking for when we have an equation are that we can't divide by zero and we can't take the square root of a negative number, otherwise we get imaginary numbers. So let's take a look at this next example, number two. Notice we have a fraction here and we say, okay, we can't divide by zero. That means what would make this denominator equal to zero? Well, let's see, you can make a little equation, x minus two equals zero, add two to both sides. And you can see, oh, if x is equal to two, then I'm gonna have zero in the denominator. So we really don't want x to be two. So when you write your domain, you could say, it's all real numbers, but x cannot be two. Now, another way to do it, if you're doing it in interval notation, sometimes I like to think about the number line. I say, here's two, it can be all of these numbers, all of these numbers, but it has to skip over two. So when I write it in interval notation, working from left to right, okay, or low to high, this is negative infinity all the way to two, not including two, we use the parentheses, and then from two, not including two, all the way to positive infinity. Infinity you can never reach, those are always gonna be parentheses. So let's take a look at number three now. Now this one, we have a square root, or you could even think of it as like an even root. Okay, this is like a square root, or if it's a fourth root, sixth root, eighth root, an even root. We can't take the even root of a negative number, otherwise we're gonna get like imaginary numbers. So what I like to do is whatever's underneath the even root, I like to make an inequality, and I like to say that that has to be greater than or equal to zero, meaning that it has to be zero or positive. Square root of zero is zero. Square root of a positive number we can do. We just don't want it to be negative. So let's go ahead and solve this equation for x. We're going to add 6 to both sides. 2x is greater than or equal to 6. Divide both sides by 2. And you can see that x has to be greater than or equal to 3. So that's our domain in inequality notation. Now in interval notation, again, let's go to the number line. And let's just kind of visualize this. So say if this is three, it can be equal to three or greater. So when we write it interval notation, it includes three. So we're gonna use a square bracket to positive infinity. You can never reach infinity, that's the parenthesis. And that's how you could write it in the interval notation. Let's take a look at three more examples. Okay, let's take a look at a few more examples. And these ones are a little bit more challenging. So definitely important to know. So let's start with number four f of x equals x plus 2 divided by the square root of 4 minus 2x. So how would you do that one? Go ahead and pause the video if you want to try this one on your own. Now, I notice there's two things going on here. One, I can't divide by 0. Remember, dividing by 0 is undefined. And I can't take the square root of a negative number. So what that means is that whatever is underneath the square root, normally what I would do is I would say 4 minus 2x is greater than or equal to 0 because that would mean it have to be positive or zero. But because this is in the denominator, it can't equal zero, so I'm gonna say it just has to be greater than zero. So let's go ahead and solve this inequality now. We're gonna subtract four from both sides. Negative two x is greater than negative four. Divide both sides by negative two. And remember, what happens to the inequality sign when you divide by a negative number? or multiply both sides by a negative number, that inequality sign changes direction. So our domain here is that x has to be less than two. That's the inequality notation. Now, in interval notation, you might wanna graph this on the number line. x is less than but not equal to two. And remember, when we write it uh, in interval notation, we go from low to high or left to right on the number line. So we're gonna say from negative infinity 
up to two, not including two, and that's our domain. Let's take a look at number five. Number five, what do you think on this one? How would you find the domain or the possible values for x? Well, if I was going to do it, the first thing I would do is I would notice that this denominator cannot be zero, right? Because we can't divide by zero. That's undefined. The other thing I would notice is that this is a quadratic, meaning a second degree polynomial. Let's see if we can factor this. What two numbers multiply to 10 but add to negative 7. Well, that's going to be negative 5 and negative 2. So now if I set both of these uh, factors equal to 0, or in this case I'm saying can't be 0, add 5 to both sides, you can see x cannot be 5, and add 2 to both sides, x cannot be 2. So our domain, we could say it's all real numbers, but x can't be 5 and x can't be 2. That's one way to write it. The other way to write it is in the interval notation, and you can see that it can't be 2, it can't be 5, but it can be everything else. So it could be all of these numbers, all of these numbers, all of these numbers. So when we write it in interval notation from uh, left to right or low to high, this is going to be from negative infinity up to 2, not including 2, then from 2 to 5, and then from 5 to positive infinity, and that's in interval notation, your domain. Now, you might be saying at this point, you know, I really like the way that this guy explains things. I wish that he was my teacher, right? Well, I have some news for you. I have two courses for sale in the description below. One's an Algebra 1 video course, and one's an Algebra 2 slash College Algebra. So if you want to dive deeper and learn more about these math concepts with me, Go ahead and check out those uh, video courses for sale in the description. But let's go ahead and do the last problem here. See if you can do this last one, number six. And what do we have here? We've got a square root and we have a fraction. So we can't divide by zero. We can't take the square root of a negative number. Okay, what do we do? Let's start with this square root first. Whatever's underneath that square root has to be greater than or equal to zero. So if I add one to both sides, I know that x has to be greater than or equal to one. Also, we cannot divide by zero, right? The denominator cannot be zero. So if I add three to both sides, I can see that x cannot be three. So going to the number line now, let's kind of look at this here. We know that x has to be greater than or equal to one, but it has to skip over three. So there's gonna be an open circle right there. So if we were to write this in interval notation, what would we say? We'd say it's going to be from 1, including 1, we use a square bracket, up to 3, parentheses, because we don't want to include 3, union, again, parentheses, because we don't want to include 3, all the way to positive infinity, and that's your domain in interval notation. So, great job. If you want to see some more examples talking about domain, follow me over to that video I did right there, and we'll get some more practice. I'll see you over in that video.